an exoplanet is is made of two worlds. Uh, one is is planet, and we know what is a planet. We have planet in the solar system, and and we add exo um, to mean that these planets are not in the solar systems. So these are planets on other stars. Our sun is a star. It's a star like all the other stars that you see at night. Um, and then these stars have also planets, and, and they have this specific name of exoplanet. So it's a kind of a um, new object of the astronomy. Um, the, the first exoplanet was found about a bit more than 20 years ago. Um, I mean, the very first was found orbiting an object which is not a star, that is a pulsar, it's called a neutron star, it was in 95. And 92, and 95 was the discovery of the first planet on the star. Um, since then, we have found a lot of planets, on exoplanets on other stars. I know we're convinced that there are plenty of these orbiting the stars. Um, but we don't really understand the whole diversity of them. The solar system has a very distinct kind of planet. Um, the one which is the smallest one, the Earth belongs to, it's called Telluric planet, and we have the giant planet, like Jupiter, Saturn. The planet we have found on other stars, the exoplanet, um, are the easiest one, and the easiest one means the biggest. And we have found quite a lot of other Jupiters. We have found very few small planets, um, but whatever we have found, they are different from the planet of the solar systems. For example, the first planet found ever on a star was a planet like Jupiter, but extremely close to the star. We call them right now the hot Jupiter, because the planet is so close to the star, then the, the atmosphere of the planet is above 1000 degrees. So it's very extreme. We don't have such a planet on the solar system. Jupiter is very far away. Um, and then we have found planets which are bigger than the Earth, but smaller than Uranus and Neptune's. We have found planets that we're not very sure what they're made of. Maybe they are rocky, maybe they are like Neptune's, maybe they are a mixture of, of a planet with gas, with water. So it has been a surprise since about 20 years about the diversity of all this other world that we have been finding. And all these exoplanets that we have found are in a way asking a lot of questions about our own system. Um, so why are we exactly like we are? Why all these other systems are different? And that's practically the main topic of astronomers right now. Um, we know that there are plenty of other planets on other stars. I think in a way that is a solved problem. It was not the case 20 years ago. And long time ago, someone that would claim this, I mean, could have real trouble. And we know the stories of people being burned because claiming that they are other world. Um, the concept of other world, of other planet, is a kind of old concept still. I mean, the Greek philosopher, they had mentioned in text that maybe there are other trees, other oceans, other lands, and other stars. So it's something quite, the concept is quite, it's quite around there since a long time. But it took us a long time to demonstrate that these planets exist. Well, the reason why it took a long time is because it's difficult to detect a planet. Well, it's difficult because it's small. I mean, a planet like Jupiter is 1,000 times uh, the mass of the Sun. That's a big one. Well, it's also difficult because it doesn't shine. A star is shining. There is the nuclear reactions going on on the star, so a lot of light. So in a way, the fact that you have these planets uh, orbiting a star um, make them difficult to find because you blinded by the star light. Um, it's a bit like you have a, a light from a car and you want to see a small mos mosquitoes next to it. It's about the same. So, so it's really something difficult. And, um, and, and the process to find this planet um, uh, requires quite a lot of technology and to detect these tiny objects. So the trick we have been using for a long time is, instead of trying to see the planet directly, 
we have tried to look for kind of a sign of the planet by looking at the star. Well, when you have a planet orbiting a star, there's a couple of things that can happen on the star. So one of the first effects you have is the motion of the planet change a little bit the motion of the star. So you see the star a bit moving around, tiny bits, small motions. So if you have instruments sensitive enough, then you can pick this and you can detect this. And by detecting this, you would find that the only way to have this tiny motion from the star is because you have an orbiting planet. Well, if you're lucky, you can have the planet just going in front of the star. So for a very short amount of time, there is a kind of a shadow and there is a decrease of the flux. It's called a transit. And it's also a way to find planets. So that's all the tricks that we have been using since 20 years, the main tricks. There is a couple of others, but that's the main tricks we have been, we have been using. And right now, I think the, 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 the number of planets found that way are of the other of four to 5,000. Um, we have also, for few systems, a kind of a picture, um, because there are some techniques, some way to use big telescopes and to try to suppress the light of the star. It only works if the star, I mean, is, if the planet is bright in a way, so the planet has to be young to be brighter. When the planet is brighter, it's younger. And the planet has to be quite far away, not too close. So there's a couple of them, but most of the knowledge we have right now on exoplanet um, comes from these two techniques. Um, there's a lot of problems that Rhino with all these findings. Um, the main one is we have not really detected a system like our own solar system. It does not mean that they don't exist. Um, it just means that they're difficult to find. I mean, a planet like the Earth is 300 times smaller than Jupiter. So there is a tiny, tiny effect on the star, making the Earth tremendously difficult to be found. Um, the chance to have an Earth transiting just, just in front of the star is, is is marginal, almost zero. Um, if the Earth would be closer, it's much, much easier. And actually, we have found a lot of Earth-sized planets much closer. We have found also a lot of planets like Jupiter closer. Well, practically all the planets we have found on other star are way closer than, than the closest planet in our system, which is Mercury. So we have detected practically thousands of planets that are all different from the solar system. And that's interesting because it shows us that maybe there is not only one way to make a planet. There may be a different way, like there are different weather. So there is some place with more rain than others. So there is some place where you would form system much closer um, to the stars. Where there is a lot of consequences with this is life because if the star is too if the planet is too close it's too hot if it's too hot there is no way you can have life any molecule will be destroyed so there's a lot of interesting questions about this um, the fact we are in a system that looks different from the other system we're seeing the fact that our system has a very well structure with a small planet inside a big one outside um, all this has to be related to the formation mechanism of all these planets and how special may be the solar system, how different may be the others. And that's the whole idea of the whole field of exoplanet. And that's the whole interest of that field. And that's why the astronomers are looking for these systems, because they, they want, in a way, to better understand the solar systems. So it's the best way to understand the solar system is to look at other stars and to find out how many of these stars have a planet like solar systems or how many are different and why are they different. So there is different kind of category of planets. Um, practically that depends on the structure. So some planets are practically made only of rocks, like, like the Earth, like Mercury, like Mars, they are very small. Other planets 
or much bigger, but they're not really made of rocks. They emit a lot of gas. That's planet like Jupiter. There are planets in between the two, like Uranus and Neptune. They have some rocks, some gas. Um, some gas, of, because it's very cold, are kind of uh, icy. So it's a kind of an ice gas, rocky planet, which is what we call ice giants. And there are also plenty of other planets in between. There are planets that are not really made of gas, not really made of rocks, but a mixture of the two. Or maybe a planet with a lot of water. There are planets which, which are a mixture of, of different kinds, like a rocky planet with a lot of water. We call that the water world. There could be also a rocky planet with a lot of gas. That would be a planet with a very thick and big atmosphere. You can have a planet which is made only of water. If you take Neptune's, you bring it closer, most of the ice in the planet would melt and that would become liquid. So you see, I mean, practically, when you look at the planet or the solar systems, if you change a little bit the ingredient, if you change a bit where is the planet, you change the temperature, you're changing how the planet looks like. So this is something we have learned by looking to all these exoplanets, is there is a range of diversity. There is not only these very strict categories of planets you have in the solar system, when you have on one hand the telluric, the giant, and the ash giants. There is plenty of other mixing, of depending how you can move around the planet, how you can mix the compositions. And I think we have still a lot of surprise ahead with a lot of findings that we will make in the next couple of 10 years.